So, back to the numbers. You're seeing the same numbers everywhere you see. If you're seeing all these things, listen, this is a very common question that people ask across Facebook and YouTube. I'm glad to address it here. I don't know which comment triggered that, but uh, listen, you're attaching way too much significance to a distraction. If you're seeing the same number over and over and over and over again, then you're the hunter who just fell for the duck decoy. And what I mean by that is that you're on the brink of something great. And the simulacrum is going to do everything it can to keep you from that. Because if it can get you fascinated with these little sinks, then you're not going to look where you're supposed to be looking. Because if you're looking for external stimuli and trying to attach significance to it, then you're never going to look within. Because that's where the true power is. The true power is knowing you have that power. Remember, act as if you are, and you will be. You will be safe. You will be healthy. You will be, you will be happy. You will be with plenty of acquaintances and friends. Will you be rich? I don't know. Do you believe you will be? And can you follow that up with physical works that will head you into that direction and fool the simulacrum into believing that you have a lot of money? Rituals are very powerful things. I don't condone them because they can be they can they can be abused. But I will tell you that I have performed one. I'm gonna tell you right now exactly. Wow, I have exactly what I did right here. I'm going to tell you a ritual I performed when I was at my, at, my, at my lowest. Shocked the hell out of me. But I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. Let me grab this real quick. Alright. A friend of mine gave me a dozen old oil lamps. Right here. This is one of my favorites. I got I got them on the shelves everywhere. Believe me, power ever goes out. I got I got plenty of oil. Got my wick, got a whole bunch of wicks. Let me tell you what I did. This is absolutely a true story. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna embellish. I don't I don't have I don't I don't I don't get off on any of that crap. I'm gonna tell you exactly because you'll know this is the truth because it's actually it's embarrassing. After 26 years in prison, I got out with $100. That's all Texas gives you is $100. Don't get me wrong, I love my state. I'm, I'm also, I was the only conservative Republican bastard in the entire prison. But uh, if there were others, they didn't speak up about it. But I'm, uh, I went through a dark time when I first got out. Didn't really understand how I was going to get on my feet. And how, I mean, I have come very far from where I was when I got out. And uh, really, I don't even know why I'm telling you all this. I, I really shouldn't even admit to, do, to doing this, but I did it. Understanding, understand, having read several books like uh, *A Bremlin the Mage*, *The Sacred Magic of a Bremlin Mage*, uh, so many different, so many different grimoires from the uh, 14th, 15th, 16th century. I read all that in prison, and I took a lot of notes. I have them now. I also read a book called *Liber Chaos*. One of the most fascinating books I have ever read, Library Chaos, absolutely explains how magic is the bridge between science and the quantum field. It's awesome. But in this instance, I was absolutely broke. I had no money. My bank account had nothing in it at all. I wasn't on Facebook. I was on Craigslist, and I, po I had posted previously on Craigslist, you know, uh, this is before I started my company, Paradise Rock Gardens, this be is before I became very successful at, at creating Stonescape. This is what got me started. This got me started on that. I was so low, didn't know what to do. I was homeless. I was living at a friend's abandoned house, and uh, I was living on my motorcycle. I got a really nice motorcycle, but at that time, my motorcycle was all I had to my name, in a backpack, with a with a tablet and a phone in it, and about two two changes of clothes. Didn't really know how I was going to get my life started or whatever. And in that abandoned house that was owned by a buddy of mine, I was just staying in one of the rooms until I could get on my feet. I didn't have any furniture. I didn't have anything. I pulled out. 
this lamp, which he, he had given me these 12 lamps. And uh, I pulled out this lamp, and I got a piece of paper out, and I wrote down exactly how much money that I wanted, and that I think I, I thought I, I might need to start, just, just to start the domino effect, because I've always been a very hard worker. I just, I was just at my, I was at the lowest. So, I put $1,200 on a piece of paper. I said, man, that's what I need right now. I can't remember exactly what the ritual was I, 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 that I spoke, but I spoke out the ritual. I, I said, within 24 hours, so I'm going to get a job. Somebody's going to contact me. My phone's going to ring. I went through all the motions of answering the phone. I pretended like I was talking to somebody. I pretended to be excited, pretend all that. I took the piece of paper that had $1,200 on it, and I, and I spoke, and I said, hey, this $1,200 this $1, uh, is already coming to me, so I don't need this paper anymore. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I tore it up, and I threw it in the candle flame, made sure it burned up. That was my ritual to induce quantum collapse. That was my ritual to induce. That was my physical act to make a thought construct come true. And I even spoke the words like, hey, man, uh, since all this is over with and it's already become fact, I'm blowing this candle out because I don't need it no more. And I blew out my flame. I put it back up. And I still went to I still went to sleep depressed. I remember that. I remember that because this was this was before I started my YouTube channel. And I and I remember going to sleep. Twelve hundred dollars. I woke up the next morning, and a woman in uh, Cal, Cal, Caldwell County, I can't remember the town. Such a small town, but it's really close to Livingston, Texas. A woman answered my Craigslist ad while I was asleep. I woke up shocked. Looked in there, I contacted her, she gave me her number, contacted her, she told me she, that she had a, a huge pile of rocks that she needed to move. It just happened to be rocks. She, she, wanted, to, she wanted to make little, little rock gardens around her, her uh, double wide trailer. She had a lot of land, animals, all that stuff. I went out there on my motorcycle, showed up. I don't have any tools, I don't have anything. I show, I show up on a, on a 2018 brand new fat boy, that's all I own. And uh, this huge sterling silver silver horse and I'm in work boots work clothes and all that and I show up and I know I looked odd to her and I just told her straight out that hey I just uh, I, I just went through some stuff and it's going to be a while before I can get back on my feet again so I'm just doing these odd jobs and she put me to work before we even started she said she was going to pay me half up half half and we agreed on $1200 and it was a lot of work, don't get me wrong, it was a lot. But what shocked me was I had take, took a break about 11.30 in the morning. And when I drove down, nine, 945 is the, name of the, is the name of the Texas highway. I went down 945 to this old barbecue place that was nearby. And I'm tired, I go in there and I use the bathroom, I wash my face and all And I don't know, so when I went back out, I looked at my phone, I looked at my PayPal, and she had sent me $600 twice and didn't even know it. She had no idea that she had actually she sent, sent it twice to me. There was $1,200 in my, in, my, in my PayPal account. It was one of, those, one of those events in my life where it was so surreal that I was not surprised. I just, I was living in a dream state all that day. I got all the work done. I did everything. And she invited me back to do some more work, some fencing and all that. But she tried to pay me another six hundred dollars, which would have been eighteen hundred bucks. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I, I worked my ass. So I did the work of like four men that day, that day. But I did so much that she was very happy about paying twelve hundred dollars. She was trying to pay me six hundred more, and I stopped her and I showed her. I said, "You already sent me that money. You already sent me." She she said it was a total accident. She didn't mean to, and you know it, all, it was all good. I mean, I made another two hundred dollars off her the next day doing some fencing for her. But the main thing she wanted was all that rock, and she's just too old and couldn't couldn't move. It was a uh, four yards of rock, and one for one. It took like me. It took me at least six hours to move all that rock, and then it took me another four hours. I was there like eleven hours a day. So anyway, I was exhausted. Came back the next day. I'm just telling you that I performed a ritual. All right. I'm not surprised by what happened, but I was at my lowest. But I was. It was heartfelt. I just went through motions. I, the simulacrum absorbed every little action I'm doing and the things I'm saying as I'm doing it and knitted that into my reality as a fact because I presented it as such. 